what is up? I got myself some uh, older ductless high walls that are going to match a couple of the cadenza units I have. I don't have enough of the indoor units, so this is like a 2020 or something, but it was never used. So actually, I had to pay a little bit of money for these. So this one here is 115 volts, so it's not going to work on the system that these are all tied into. But I'm trying to free up this unit here. This is a, another one ton unit. And I took the circuit board out, which is laying over there. And I just got the uh, my own signal, you know, pulse width modulation, whatever. DC voltage controlling the fan just to run the fan on this all the time. So that my heat pump from a water heater can use this evaporator when it's using the indoor coil. Also got that outdoor coil I can switch to, which I'm probably going to in a few minutes when I start tearing this sucker off of here. So... I'm wanting to take this unit off, put it back together to be like it originally was so I can put it on an actual ductless system. So one of the units I got now is a 115 volt and I knew that I could just use it in place of that one 115 volt. So I have it hooked up in testing. This was new, never used. And check this out, just you know, show and tell. Here's an oscilloscope hooked up. It's actually triggered pretty good. Um, of course, I just booted it back up for power. Of course, it's going to have an indoor fault. So we're going to go indoor mode off. It should be saying uh, fan only. So I think this booted back up in the mode it was in. It's actually reading the temperatures. It looks like indoor temp, evaporator temp. So I have a, be careful, that's high voltage divided down. So that works and it works. Um, this is cranked. <laughs> I have it set for like 67. So it's nice cold air, probably 50 degrees coming out right here. And it's probably like low 70s in here, which 77 is 25 degrees Celsius. These read in Celsius, so convert it. We're probably like 73, 74 over here. Nothing's hooked up for refrigerant. This is just running a fan right now, so I'm testing it. Kind of see the data. Uh, it's talking. So it's trying to talk to the outdoor unit, and it can't, which this this can emulate the outdoor unit so. so I'm in here taking all this apart got all the plastics off gotten it partially off the wall to get into the line sets to undo the flares I gotta disconnect that so over here is a uh, voltage doubler board I put in there so the original circuit board just laying over there so that's a voltage doubler just takes 115 and then it's output 300 volts DC right into the ECM motor which powered it up um, and then I'm using just a microprocessor stashed in there and I was able to, I had it programmed so I can uh, send like a one to six volt DC signal in the ECM to basically set whatever fan speed I wanted to run and just ran constantly. Well, whenever the thermostat down here was on, because I did have this hooked up to where it was gonna actually cycle the, the water heater whenever I wanted to cool the room. It just it wasn't, it just didn't work out that way. So I've just been leaving this running a fan only just to use this for an indoor coil on my homemade heat pump from a water heater over here. Circulation and the units outside. So, good thing is that thing has an outdoor coil or an indoor coil to use for the evaporator. And so all I to do is just pump down this one and open the valves to the outdoor coil. And so my heat pump's still up and running to heat my water as I take all this out. Oh well, my goodness, I'm going to have to revisit all this hackery. Hack in a good way, actually that I did to this high wall. It's been at least two years, so I have to try to remember. So, so let me go get the board. Here we go. So here's the board that comes out of there. I think there's another piece, but this has the uh, power supply for the motor. So you got your capacitor, full wave rectifier, and your fan motor plugs in right here. So you got DC power going to it, these two terminals, and then it's like uh, 15 volts, I think. Yeah. Uh, one to six for the motor and then feedback. I think I have that all memorized. So it's like plus, minus, which is common, which is pin three, goes skips pin two. Three is your 15. And then uh actually I'll really be four. Five will be the one through six, and the sixth pin will be feedback. So all I have on here is um I think that's what this is. This is set for probably 12 or 15 volts. One of these boards is, and one board must be this one. The other one's probably 5 volts for my microprocessor. So that's probably what this is, is feeding in <laughs> power, because you have to give that voltage to the motor, the 15 volts. And then the next one's going to be speed, which I'm doing through pulse width modulation from this board into this plug. 
uh, powering an optical isolator because everything on the motor, including your, you know, one to six volts in, you know, everything, reference to ground, it's high voltage, so you got to isolate it. So this is isolated to give a, you know, the to pulse. And it's basically just taking the 15 volts out, going through a voltage divider on the resistors there, into an optical isolator, you know, transistor output. And so I'm just pulse width modulation gives it, you know, whatever average voltage. And I could vary that to say whatever speed that worked. It worked perfectly. When I would push these buttons up and down, that fan would go up and down in speed and then stay there and it would lock. It would set in the EEPROM. That way, if the power goes out, it would go back where it was. Freaking bitching. So this all worked. So because I actually didn't hack anything, and I think I knew I didn't want to, there we go. That's disconnected. This is going to go back on there. Two thermistors go back on here. I got to put the other part of the board with the power and everything attaching, and this will be back functional. And who knows what I'll use this for again. <laughs> Grab some more parts down. That goes into the front display piece. This looks like the power part was unscrewed. Looks like all the wires are pulled out. So that would um, possibly be fun to put all back together. However, I don't have to because actually I have this one. So one of the units I uh, had, a, I fried the motor on accident, figured what the fuck I did. And I don't know, I, I just was cleaning up junk. I threw it away and I wish it didn't because I just, I probably could have just gotten another motor and put it in there and had a, another high wall. So I didn't know I was going to use them all. So here's the complete with the two, with the sensor for return air and the sensor that goes right in that coil. That's it. This just needs to plug back in there. Should be good to go. Okay, I slammed this in there. This, this whole piece just goes in with one screw. And then the sensor goes in this spot, which is still there. Two ground wires and then the room temperature sensor right there. Looks like I need to clean that edge of that coil. So now you wipe this all down, but this should be fixed. So outdoor communication fault. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. So we're just uh, on the indoor one, so be Data inquiry, indoor. So it's giving me my temperatures and stuff again. Indoor mode off, blah, blah, blah. And I think it went back on whatever it was programmed for last, which was probably the fan. Running parameter setting. <laughs> set PMV open. I forgot about all this earlier in the video. That you could set your expansion valves and the reverse and valve state. She running, so this should be good to go now. Should be able to put it back together and be able to use it to add to my system. And then this 115 volt one is ready to go up where that one was. And I think the line set should just connect right up to uh, the one that's up there now. It's the next morning. I left this unit powered up and running on fan only, and it stayed running. I kind of uh, realized when I was out here yesterday that a couple times, I think when I went over there with the remote to turn that one back on cool, that I think it changed this mode to cool, which certainly is going to cause the fault because it can't communicate and run the outdoor unit. So, Also look at this model, comes with a multi-function board. <laughs> And at this, right here is just a remote. I think this is a remote start stop, right? So I might be able to just break this connection for it to stop if I wanted to. It's an external relay. It's also got the connections to go to a wired thermostat. But I don't need that. I'm just I just need this to run the fan to hook back up to be my inside air handler. That's all it needs to be for my heat pump for my water heater. It's just got to blow air and then the outdoor unit runs on its own control so should be able to slap this up and get it running be awesome I just started unthreading these that's good when a four-year-old unit still has the nitrogen in it <laughs> this is going to connect right back up to my line so this is actually going to try to be a real easy change out it's awesome I spoke too soon so these pipes are not staggered at the same as the one I just took off. Look at this, there's a gap. Two and a half inch gap. 
shit. So I'll have to extend that. Fuck. Okay, I got this unit kind of hung. This is the thermostat that's not connected now. Got the remote attached to that. And that wire app seems to already go down the line sets and come out over there. I just checked it for continuity, it's good. Extra contact on the 9340 relay over there that starts stops that little baby 6000 VTU compressor out there. So all I'll do is just apply those to those contacts and I'll start stop the fan mill over here. Perfect. This is a pretty cool high wall unit that it um, had the kickstands to hold it up while you're connecting the lines and then you collapse them and it drops. So you don't have to use like a screwdriver or something to prop it open. And then up here it's got these little things to hold this open. Drop that down now. One thing about white is you sure get your fingerprints all over it. So nothing special in here. This is just a mechanical room. Batteries are coming out, going outside, but this is where the solar charger inverter is. So whenever the my contraption is heating the water, it takes you know it's cooling the air right here. So it says CP. What that means, but obviously the remote input. So I'm gonna jump her this wire here. See if the fan kicks on. There it goes. I think that actually reads the real temperature, not the set point. Wow, I'm not used to that. So many high walls over the years, they didn't show you what the temperature was. But I think that's probably about accurate. That's good because I was kind of like, if I didn't power this back up, I couldn't walk in and see what the temperature is anymore, even though that wasn't controlling anything. But my 24 volt transformer was up there. Now it's not. Uh, I got a couple extra wires here. I could put power over there and tap in that transformer. There's no reason to. So this is 130 degrees. It doesn't need to run, but yeah, right now the fan's blowing. I'm just gonna leave it jump like that uh, for a while again. Make sure it goes, but dude, that's beautiful. Other than the ugly tape I used to patch that up. But again, mechanical room, not a paying customer. Mechanical room at my house. So speaking of loud fans, woo, it's really pulling the voltage down on the solar array, 163, but that fan's going real fast, which means it's putting a shitload of current into the batteries. So let's check it out. Uh, dropping the voltage here, 16 amps, seven, that's it, pretty much getting max near when my panel's put out. 2.6 kilowatts. And on the battery side, that's 44 amps going in fat wires feeding the, the battery array up there. 44 amps at the 48 volt side, 16 amps, 17 amps at the, you know, high voltage side on the solar. And it'll even go more than that. So that's awesome. So putting in 2.6 kilowatts at like 9.30 in the morning into my batteries. The batteries are at uh, 52.6. I think I dropped them down to like 50-ish overnight with the heat pump and me running the AC several times. I was running these AC several times yesterday and somewhat after dark, so I was running off batteries when I was working out here. So, and it still didn't even dent the batteries. And I, uh, that's only two-thirds of the batteries I have, so when I put it outside, it'll be more, 50% more than what's hooked up now, basically. It's going to be awesome. So I'm going to leave that, leave that. I got to go, uh, I'm waiting for uh, somebody to score me a, a unit, a scratch and dent which is hard on Saturday, but it looks like we found something. So I gotta start loading up my tools in my truck because uh, when it's ready, I gotta go pick up a unit and go put it in at the daughter's house. Yeah, hopefully uh, the unit is, you know, they have one, but they think they do. Okay, I've got unit ready to fire up. Got the uh, vacuum down in the opening the lines out there, so I just need to crank this thing up a bunch to get it kick on since my water heater is nearly at its full temperature. So this is gonna be starting the thing up at an extreme. Right, there we go. So that should kick on and open the fan. The presser's already started, there we go. You can't see that display unless I turn the light off. So that's going. Let's go outside. Okay, she's going. Yeah, that was 
just waiting for this to pull the suction down so I can then close this service valve. So this is the outdoor coil, which I can actually unplug the fan on now. So all I do is just unplug the fan while I'm not using it. If ever I need to use the outdoor coil, all I do is uh, pump down the indoor high wall, open this one and plug the fan back in and the fan runs and the pressure runs. So pressure's dropping down. So go ahead and close this. I already got the liquid line closed. I'm just closing the suction line now. I'm going to let it run. Just see if I have to put just a couple ounces back into it. Um, since I, I did pull out a little bit when I took that off. So, and it's charged kind of how it sits here. So pretty critical charge probably. It's capillary tube system. There's capillary tubes back there feeding this coil. And then there's capillary tubes right here feeding the indoor high wall. Which works great. Okay. The indoor unit running. I dropped the fan speed down to medium. Since that is a one ton, this is like a half ton compressor in here. So I got about 136, 23 superheat, 85 in the room. It's actually dropping the temperature of the room. It was 90 and 65 degrees blowing out. It's like textbook 20 degrees split right there. That temperature is not critical. It's it's more. This is more geared for heating water, but you can kind of get this dialed in like that. So that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pull my gauges and just let this unit run a few minutes and then it should be all set. All right, nice cool air coming out. You know, 65 is cool compared to what it is in this room. Yeah. So it's running, it's actually got the water hotter than I run it, it's at the 131, so I'm going to turn off for a second. This thing's just ripping, man. Three, almost 3.1 kilowatts out of the solar, it's putting 37 amps and 48 volts into the batteries, and putting out 990 to run the well, the light and the heat pump. If I turn the light off, you'll see it drop below 900. So it's below 900 watts to run the compressor, circ pump, and that fan to heat water. Less than one kilowatt. Element in here is 4.5. This might take just a little longer than the element to heat, but not that much longer. <laughs> so, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this back to 130. There we go. So I turned off. This should shut off in a second. Which will release the relay that breaks the 120 to the compressor. And it's going to break the... There we go. Anti-short cycle delay timer started. That just went to standby. And the blade's closing. So we'll see how this goes for the next day or so. As long as it never eventually freaks out because it isn't talking to an outdoor unit. But I think, hopefully just having it on fan only, it will just stay running in fan only, which is and on medium speed, which is what I'm after. So now this sucker is going to be putting more power. Over 50 amps at 48 volts going into my batteries. Over 50 amps on the wire, which is this big fat wire back there. It's like as big as my pinky. Um, into those batteries. So 3.1 kilowatts right now going into my 48 volt, you know, array. Fully charged at 56 volts, so it's 52 volts now. It'll be, this will be fully charged here in a little bit at that rate. Pretty kick ass. And the kick ass thing about all this stuff is if my power goes off, this still runs. <laughs> and uh, once I get some more ductless stuff hooked up, I'll be able to, you know, run a zone when my power goes off, which it sometimes does for up to three, four hours in the middle of the night in Glendale <laughs> in monsoon season. We have above ground power wires here, so they like to take a shit. Anyway, I think that'll do it for that, and I'll just maybe do an update another time after I let it run a while. Catch you guys later. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment.